So congratulations, you've just been appointed as the Minister of Spacey Stuff and Tax Evasion. So one day you're chilling in your new office when you notice an email turns up from the Prime Minister himself. Well done on the new position, can't congratulate you in person, things are a bit taxing at the moment. Lol lol. Oh, by the way, as the Minister of Spacey Stuff, you need to get humans to the nearest star system by this time next year, or I'll execute your wife and children. I'm granting you infinite funds, love and kisses, Dave. Seems a bit harsh for the first day on the job, but whatever. How hard can it be? Don't we have really good rockets now, anyway? So, using conventional rockets, with our nearest star system Alpha Centauri being about four light years away, yeah, we could manage that, no problem, and arrive sometime around a hundred years. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. Alright, chill Winston, you've got infinite money, no problem. How are we gonna get to the stars then? You do a little bit of googling, luckily clever people have been thinking about this for a very long time now. So you're gonna draw up a little list, and split it in two, which are methods that are slower than light, and methods that are faster. Well, you've got a year to get there, and Alpha Centauri is about four light years away, so let's go faster than light instead. Yeah, but isn't that supposed to be impossible because Einstein? Yeah, probably, but there might be fun ways around it. So Einstein was pretty clear that stuff can't travel faster than light. To make stuff go fast, you have to put energy in, and the faster it goes, the more energy you need. Yeah, so there isn't enough energy in the known universe to get a single electron to the speed of light. But there might be hacks. Could we use a wormhole, maybe? Well, yeah, there's some good maths behind it. There's also some good maths behind why a tortoise could beat Usain Bolt in a sprint, so best to be sceptical of good maths. But chances are, to keep the mouth of a wormhole open, you're going to need some stuff called exotic matter, which we don't have any of at the moment. Also, keep in mind, if you invent wormholes somehow, getting to the stars will be the least of your worries, because anyone with a screw loose could just start funneling energy from the sun into your bedroom. Any other good ideas, then? Yeah, another quick Google search. You find out about a thing called the Alcubierre drive. Stuff can't go faster than light, but maybe you can bend the rules a bit. So you use exotic matter, which we don't have, remember, to shrink the space in front of a starship and expand it behind it. This won't piss Einstein off, but it might get around his rules about speed, because you're not actually accelerating matter. So the Prime Minister writes to you again, the tax scandal thing is blowing up a bit, need to lie low a while, I'll give you a few centuries to get to a star instead. Well, that's good, now we can use normal physics. So we've got standard rockets, which are fine, but we'll take a while to get to Alpha Centauri. Like, a hundred years? Can't we just freeze the crew for the journey? Yeah, great idea, except that definitely brain damages people. Unless you want to go to Alpha Centauri so you can dribble at it, maybe that won't work so well. Well, how about we build a generation ship? You know, like in Pandorum? Because that went really well for them. The first generation of the crew bring up the next generation, and so on, and finally by, say, the third generation, the crew arrive. Yeah, maybe. I mean, assuming there isn't a revolution, or total psychological collapse like regularly happens on Earth all the time. Yeah, why not? But really, the problem here is the same with all of this stuff, which is, once again, bloody Einstein. We all know now that the closer you get to the speed of light, the more time slows down relative to you. So when you arrive at Alpha Centauri, maybe only a few years have passed for you, but decades might have passed on Earth. But hold your horses, there's another small, uh, niggle. Even if you pull it off and we've got a galactic British Empire, how do you communicate? Some stars are thousands of light years away. Hi, we've run out of milk and we're not drinking black tea because we're not fucking barbarians, please send milk. Okay, full fat or semi-skimmed? What? Who, who cares? Fine, semi-skimmed. Organic or non-organic? Non-organic is fine. Supermarket stuff or, like, independent farm milk? What? It, it's been 7,000 years, Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, fine, fine, okay, okay, we'll sort it. So, is Semiskim the one with the green lid, or...? And yeah, one more spanner in the works then. Let's say you've got a few planets in your empire and everything's going great. How are you going to keep them loyal to Earth, exactly? Say one of them wants to declare itself independent. What are you going to do? Write them a strongly worded letter? Or say there's a revolution and they need backup? Yeah, yeah, no, no problem, help's on the way. Should be with you in about, ooh, one to one and a half thousand years. Put the gattle on, we'll be there pronto. So, with all that in mind, maybe you should just step down and take a job at the Ministry of Silly Walks instead. Because it's just not feasible, is it? We're not going to the stars. We don't have the technology, energy, or ambition. And to be honest, maybe we can just give up with all of those other impossible things we want to do. Like crossing the ocean. Oh, we we did that already. Uh, bad example. Well, then, like, heavier than air flying machines. Uh, oh yeah, we, we licked that one as well. Or getting to the moon, that's completely stupid. Oh wait. All of those things were supposed to be completely impossible. And they were, until we did them, obviously. We've got a pretty good track record so far, really. There are plenty of reasons to remain optimistic about travelling to the stars, even if it's a few centuries away. Hang back, take it easy, we'll probably work it out at some point. Maybe take a holiday in the meantime. Somewhere kinda tropical? Central America? I hear Panama is lovely this time of year.